Okay, we've just ticked over to 103. So I guess we'll get started. <laughs> Thank you everybody for joining us today. Um, I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the various countries that we're on today uh, and paying my respects to their elders, past, present, and emerging. Um, I'll just introduce Wolfgang Barth, who's our corpus manager and one of our resident data experts here at the ANU node of the Center of Excellence for the Dynamics of Language. He's going to kindly teach us about creating our own personal web page. So I'll just hand it over to him. Okay. So hi everybody, can everybody hear me all right? Yeah, okay, good. Um, so to get started, um, I was thinking like what, what would be the, the purpose for uh, early career people to get a website online? What would the purpose be over that website? Um, and I put some basic information together and uh, as this is a workshop, uh, I would first like give you the information that I gathered and then uh, turn this into a workshop where you actually um, build your own or get started on building your own website. Um, okay, so let me see if I can. Okay, so for me, uh, a good website should be informative, it should be inspiring and it should be nice to look at. And um, that is uh, a very basic principle. Like if, if people don't like the website, they don't like to spend time on the website. And so I think it's very important that a website looks okay and that everything on the website has, like gives the impression that it works properly, uh, that it does what it's supposed to be doing. Like if you click a button, that the button does what the button says and things like that. Um, also, I think a, a good website should have like a single purpose. So, if you think about like everything you do on your in your life, not all of that should go on your website. So the website uh, purpose for your like career, I, th I would say, um, most likely would be to get a job, right? To get like hired by somebody. To and the web for the website the purpose would be then uh, to give the impression to somebody who would Google you, Google your name in an application process. Uh, and then click on your website, and then this person who would potentially hire you would get the impression from the website that you are a, a good person to work with, that you are uh, interesting, that uh, that you have your stuff in order, and so on. Okay. So the single purpose for our the the, the website we would be building today would be your academic part of life. Um, and uh, the next point, a good website is part of an online presence ecosystem. And what I mean by that is that uh, a website by itself doesn't do very much. So it's, uh, it's like a small piece in a puzzle and there's other pieces which are very important, uh, like social media, you can be on Twitter, be active on, on even like Facebook is still around and, and other platforms and then connect this with your website, a link from the website to your, to your Twitter account uh, or to your Instagram account and so on. Um, of course, with, with this comes kind of like the, uh, the, the problem that you then have to apply some kind of, like you have, you have to like stay on brand in all your interactions with the internet. So if in, uh, on your website, you link to your Twitter account and in Twitter you are just uh, like going out and partying really hard, then that might be like uh, a little bit like a mismatch of your brand. Okay, so think about what you would want people to see, and then create this overall online image of who you think would best uh, of what you think would best represent you, and then a, a big part of this in the center would be your own website. Um, and so that brings me to the last point. Uh, the website is not an exhaustive list of everything you've ever done. So um, I, would, I would like limit the volume of the website and uh, the, the content, like focus everything on the website to this one single purpose that I mentioned earlier. 
um, the layout of your website. Um, I think for academic website, um, the layout is important in that it shouldn't be in the way of what people want to do with the website. And if you think about, uh, let's say, like a navigation menu on a website, if you have like the main navigation and then you have like a sub navigation and then a sub sub navigation and then like that's kind of exhausting for people to find what they want to get out of your website if the layout is too complicated. Um, in our example today, uh, when we get to the workshop later on, I would um, pretty much encourage everybody to build like a single page website, which is um, like you, you click on it on Google, like somebody would Google your name, find this website, click on it, and there's one page with all the information. And it's just, you scroll down from top to bottom, that's it. So there's no like a sub menu and so on. Okay, so you, you can add pages later on, but for today's purpose, I think it's better to stay focused on this one single page. Um, and uh, research, research shows that people spend a very, very short time on a website. So um, it's about 30 seconds that people would be on your website. And the purpose of the website usually would be people want to get your contact details. People want to get your university affiliation. Uh, people would want to get out of the website like single items and they, they are looking for those items. And when they find those items, usually they leave the website again. Okay. So if you have um, a lot of like uh, things that would kind of make it obscure where all this information is, then I think it kind of like defeats the purpose of, the, of, your, of your website. Um, and that uh, comes with uh, what I already mentioned that you should have uh, like a, a very limited hierarchy in the website and a limit of content. So it shouldn't be, if you print it out, it shouldn't be like five pages of text on your website. It should be something that can be read pretty fast and, and skim through pretty quickly, you know, like have a clear structure with headlines and bullet points and so on. So that people can get to what they want to want to get out of their websites uh, really quick. And uh, especially, I think that's true for text. If, if, it's, if it, the website looks like it's a book you, you need to read, then I think it's kind of like defeating the purpose. Okay? Uh, so if the text is too long on your website, it, it kind of, um, people lose interest in it. Um, what should definitely be on the website? For me, I think the main purpose of the website would be uh, the contact. Somebody would want to find your contact. Um, so the contact details should be there and the photo that identifies you as who they protect, like the people potentially uh, talk to at a conference or, or, or met somewhere, you know, like if, if a photo of you shows um, who you are in a, in a, in a um, in like a passport format or so, I think it's very fast for people to be like, okay, I'm here on the, on the correct website. This is the person I'm looking for. And uh, then they are happy and then they, 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 they are confident that they are at the right place. Um, you should have, uh, as we are talking about academic websites, you should have your publications on the website. I think that's very important. Uh, and the DOI of the publication, like the digital object identifier, uh, which can help the people to find this application. So it could be a link to the DOI. It could be a link to if, if the publication is uh, available online somewhere with a publishing house, it could be a link to that um, a publication online, or you could also have the PDF on your website in the background, and then people could click on the PDF and just download it from the paper, uh, from the website, if the publishing house allows to do that. Okay, so some publishing houses allow that, some publishing houses don't allow that. Um, I think the next thing is, also obvious, so you should have links to projects that you're working on, uh, people you're working with, uh, your, your own university, I think, should be linked on there. If you have any material archived, uh, you should link that to, for example, Carl Giesek, or if you have your data on Zenodo or other archiving uh, services, uh, I think it's, it's good to link those to the website so that people can find those things really quickly. If you have a Twitter, a Twitter handle, I think it should also go into the website. Uh, the, I guess for not, uh, that's the easiest, fastest way for people to co communicate with you. They would just like 
send you a tweet and uh yeah so the, the that should definitely be on there pretty high up i would say uh, how to best contact you and uh, if you have something like a youtube channel that is also good i think to have on there if it is on 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 topic like if you have a youtube channel with your i don't know your dance moves or something it's great but i think it's better if you have like a youtube channel about let's say um like if you have uh, your past presentations from from conferences on a youtube video and you have your own channel where you have all your conferences i think it's nice if you link uh, from your back uh, from your website to this um youtube channel where you have all your videos um you should also have your orchid id on the website so that people can uh like really definitely find out all your publications and what they look like um and everything that I just mentioned should be handled with the best practice guidelines, um, which has pretty much like two elements to it. That's the best practice of your academic field. Um, so the content of your website should be reflecting the standards of what you're doing in your work. So for example, if you have like um, uh, photos of of people on your website, you should name those people in the in the text describing the photo. Because if somebody, if you are applying for a job somewhere and somebody is looking at your website and they think like, hey, th this person is really slacking off when it comes to giving credit to the people they work with, that doesn't give a good impression of your work uh, um, in general. So I think it's very important that you on the website reflect the standards of what you do in, I guess, linguistics or anthropology or whatever field you're working in. Um, that also applies to the publication standard format. So, um, yeah, whatever your, your field standard formatting is for your publications, I think that should also definitely be that way on the website. Um, and that the second part of the best practice applies to the, the web design and that is something that you pretty much would have to google yourself because it's a, a kind of like a, a not very intuitive kind of best practice um, that is used in, in web design for example uh, i have like two sentences here uh, check out our best practice guidelines for more information or find our best practice guidelines by clicking here and so uh, this is pretty much like two times the same content, but one is best practice, which is the first one. The second one, uh, find our best practice guidelines by clicking here. It's very common, a lot of people do this, that they have like a link which, which has the word here, um, but that is not best practice. It kind of like makes it a little bit harder to read, to have, to have something um, like this on your website. So there's like, very, you can just like Google that pretty much. Um, there's like thousands of people writing about best practice on, on web design uh, everywhere if, on any platform. And so whatever you like the most, I think you should, um, you just, should just take and, and apply to your own website. Okay, so now we come to the first part of the workshop. Now it's getting a little bit hands-on. Um, I have a collection of websites. Let me just put this. I'm just going to get all those links into the comments. Okay, so I now uh, sent the first four links that I have on the website to the chat and I think come oh, you only sent them to oh wait a second only to that everyone so now everybody should should have gotten the, the links and I would encourage you to look at those websites maybe we, should, we start with Nick Tberger's um, website that's the first one first link and just write down what you like about uh, the, the website and what you don't like about the website and like write that into the chat or, or we can like talk about it so maybe 
for like two or three minutes. Like, click, uh, check it out, the Tuberger's site, and let, let us know what you think about it. Huh. Okay, so we're already getting first kind of responses. Uh, it feels like it needs a photo on top of uh, on top of the page with a white space. Yeah, so I, I agree with that. That's kind of it's uh, it's not it's not really like a hundred percent clear at what at who's on whose website you are. Um, It's too dense. Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of very dense information on there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think overall the so the, the word cloud looks more modern than the rest of the page. That's very true. Uh, so overall, I think the page is uh, um, like an, an old example. It's it's it's. Um, uh, it doesn't focus on, on, on layout so much. And uh, yeah, the word cloud on the side is a little bit uh, like uh, more, more modern, I guess. Even though I must say, I'm, I'm personally not a big fan of, of word clouds. I mean, they, they look nice on first, when you first look at them, but you don't really can do much with them, I think. Um, where does the word cloud get data from? So from what I can tell, it looks like it's a like a gadget that is embedded in the HTML website, and it just takes the content of that website and turns it into a word cloud uh, live, like at the very moment when you load a page. Um, and you can tell that because, the, for example, like one of the terms in the word cloud is HTTP, which is which is like part of a of a HTML tag or blank as well. It's like it's part of, the, of a tag, it's not content. Um, yeah. Um, okay. Good, okay, so um, there's like two things that I, that I note uh, or that I wrote down about uh, this example. Um, like uh, like one of the big criticism for me is like every you guys are all right now at the on your laptops, um, and this is not really representative of what's happening uh, anymore because uh, nowadays most clicks onto a website come not from a laptop or, or desktop, they come from a phone. Okay, and so this layout that we are looking at here at Nikki Burgers. Uh, website that doesn't really come across on the phone. I think actually the website doesn't really load on the phone at all. It kind of like crashes halfway through and just leaves an empty like white space. And I think that has to do with the, the word cloud thing on the side that it doesn't somehow, it breaks the, the phone layout. Um, and so that's a little bit of, of a problem of this website. Okay, maybe we move on to the second. Um, Website. Uh, it was. Oh, it's Spike. Okay. You guys all remember Matt Spike from a few years ago? He, he's now in Edinburgh. Let me know what you think about uh, uh, the layout on the website in general. Uh, 
Oh yeah, yeah. There's two two gray squares at the bottom. Yeah. Uh, so that uh, I uh, yeah I know where that comes from. So the um, Matt he used a template, uh, and on this template it has some sample tags and some sample headlines and also some sample boxes, which I guess he, he forgot to delete. Yeah. So they are still there. Um, yeah, and they, they look a little bit like there should be something, but there's nothing yet. So ideally, maybe there would be like PowerPoint presentations in there or something like that. Uh, yeah, or photos. It's more engaging, but long. Yeah, I think it's a little bit long. Yeah, that's true. Uh, highlights rather, uh, but long highlights rather than full list of pubs would be better to keep it less text heavy with link to other publications. Yeah, I think that's that's good. Yeah, it's very similar to a CV. Um, that's true. Um, um, I think like CV is kind of like a, a tricky thing if you have a website and the content of the website is too similar to your CV, you run into the problem that if you apply somewhere where you take your CV and, and like change it to fit the job description a little bit, and then people would find your website and on your website, the CV would be a little bit different. People like, might be like, oh, hmm, which, which one is the truth here? Did you like really uh, go to the university until September or did you already end? University in July, even though in reality you just went to field work in the middle, you know. Like so, if you put something online, you have to be aware that people find it. And if you if you your CV more or less on your website, then people might hold you accountable for what you actually wrote on your website, uh, and then not trust your CV that you sent in for a job application. Oh, okay. So there's still yeah. So it's not updated, I guess. Uh, so one in work unfinished paper from five years ago. So it's, yeah, so an, another problem, I guess, when you uh, one of your own website is that you kind of have to update it as your life or career um, moves on. So if you, if you have new publications, you should put them on there. If you finish something, it should be indicated there and so on. Uh, oh, it's, uh, so it's still unfinished. Oh, okay. So it's... <laughs> So it's still in progress. Okay, all right, um, good. So, um, so the uh, the other two links that I sent you, maybe we're gonna hold back on those so that we can move on to actually building your own uh, website. And uh, so, um, I, I looked around a lot on the internet for different options to like host your website. And the, there's, for example, like WordPress, uh, and you can host, uh, like have websites on GitHub and so on. And uh, what I thought is the fastest way to something that is online um, would be pretty much following in Matthew Spike's footsteps and building a Google site, because Google takes care of 95% of the, the web, design, uh, web design and layout and server and all that stuff. And you only have to pretty much provide content to it and then you're good to go. And so that is um, what I thought we should do. And so let me just go back to slideshow. One more slideshow again. Oh yeah, okay, good. And so, yeah, here's the information about the Google sites. They are free to use, so you only need to sign up or have a Google account already. And they are very good for a static content. So if you have something that doesn't change too much over time, something that you would maybe update every few months or so, I think Google is the easiest way because you don't have to learn the, the methods and, and uh, ways to go about the, the software every time you access it because it's a very basic kind of uh, functionality that is provided from Google, like adding a headline, adding a adding a gray fields that you can fill up with photos and so on. So it's it's very simple and user user friendly, and it's part of the uh, Google ecosystem, which makes it more findable. Uh, so if if people Google your name, then it's more likely to come up 
when it's a Google site compared to it being a WordPress site. Okay. Uh, so. Oh yeah. Okay. So how how to go about it? So the so now for the next half hour, I would uh, encourage everybody to get started on setting up your own Google site, and that is uh, some very basic steps which we can go through together. And that is uh, first thing would be to Google, uh, like to type into the search field in Google Google sites. Then that should get you to um, the uh, the application where you can build your website. Um, and when you click on that, it's like Google site sign in or something like that. If you have already a Google account, then it should automatically just open and you can start. If you don't have an account, uh, it asks you to, to create an account with, um, with, I think, any kind of email address. It doesn't have to be a Gmail email address. Um, and so, yeah, please go ahead and uh, do that. And in there, I guess, uh, um, how can I change to, oh, you know what? How about you share your screen and then like I step through it with you on your screen. You think that's fair? Should can do that? Okay, so Grant is now sh uh, sharing his screen. And uh, so now we're going through it step by step. Um, so yeah, the first thing is to, to just click on Google Sites, sign in. Do you want to mute your uh, okay. screen and I'll unmute mine? So uh, now we are on the user interface for the Google Sites uh, creator. And yeah, you can just click on got it. So, and there we have different already pre-designed layouts. And I would for an academic, uh, personal academic site, I would just click, uh, choose the portfolio. And that should get us to a standard layout Side. Okay, so yeah, so now we are on the uh, web designer interface where we can design our own website. And um, yeah, you can just like skip, skip this tour. And you can already tell by looking at this, this looks already a lot like Matt Spike's website, right? It's like, it has a standard photo on the, on the right, and it has um, the hi, I'm name uh, role from location. And there you can just like put in your own name um, and role and your location. So in my case, it would be, hi, I'm Wolfgang, a corpus manager from Canberra. <laughs> uh, you can just put that in there. And then, uh, yeah, that's kind of like the first step. And um, as maybe every, everybody uh, do that, do like just do some like one, two changes to the, the headline here. And then we're gonna publish the page and then you can see what it actually looks like on, on the website. Yeah. I am Grand Data. Okay, good. So this is uh, the, the first step and maybe scroll down so that we can take a look at uh, what we already have here. You see there's already like 
pre-designed layouts uh, of which like some are great boxes and those are the great boxes that Matt forgot to delete on his website. Uh, so we can leave those on there for now. Uh, for now, uh, you can see on top on the right side, there's a blue button say publish. And just click on publish. And then it asks you what you want your website to be called. You can just like put in your name, I guess. And Aiton. So that's uh, advantage of your name. It's it's rare, so it's not already taken. So in my case, I think I would Wolf, most likely have to put in like Wolfgang Bart twenty seven or whatever, or Wolfgang underscore Bart or something like that to make it actually work. And then you can click on publish. And your website should be public now. So if you next to the publish uh, button, there's a little arrow. If you click on that, you can see if you published site. And you can see uh, on the address bar on top of the browser, you now are at sites.google.com views grand on home, your homepage. And there is your website online. Boing. So that's pretty much the big first step. Now we have a website online. Very basic. Woohoo. Woohoo. <laughs> first website. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, okay. So now let's maybe add some content. Um, and guys, so maybe you, you could have, the, have a look at the um, chat because there's some questions. I think some people. The web designer, the website designer interface on Google Sites. Uh, oh, okay, okay, hi, hi. Sorry. Questions. Can okay. Anyone, yeah. Can anyone hear me? Sorry. Yeah. I just. Um, I just, um, yeah, I, this is the problem with multitasking is I just missed, I, I've i got one set up. This is Jackie Troy here. So I was just going down to the bottom. Where was the publish bit? Oh, the um, publish so, button is so on I've got top selected, on the right I've, side. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. So right here. So, oh, sorry. Hang on. Just show me again. I'm trying to juggle screens. So it goes in. So, oh, publish. Right. Mm -hmm. Wake up Australia. Yep. Okay. So I just go. What did you put in? You put selected. You didn't didn't fill the selected work. You just put. You just clicked publish. Yeah. That's all. Yeah, right. So just change yeah. the headline. Oh, and then web address. Then, so your yeah. web address. What did you put in for that? Uh, so you can put your name. Yeah. And if your name is not already taken as a uh, website, then it uh, lets you know that you can just publish it. So there's a pop up, and there you can select what you want your website to be named. Can we change it once we've set that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So it's um, oh, so you have to then click request publish search. It. What? No. Um, so I've just put in Jacqueline dot Troy, which it says use only lowercase letters, numbers, and dashes. Please. Oh yeah. Yeah, I think the dot is a problem. The dot's no problem. Okay, so it's going to go HTTPS. So I just go tick. Yeah. Oh, publish. Right. Excellent. Suddenly I'm oh. Sorry, that was too easy. I'll shut up now. <laughs> Thanks. And yeah, Thank now you. when you go Thanks. next to the publish on the little arrow, like next to the publishing button, there you can see view published site. And when you click on that, it should take you to where your site is actually live and online already. Mm -hmm. Sorry, where, where did you say? Where was that little arrow? Sorry, I don't know. I'm, I've just got one screen, some sort of. Uh, next to the publishing button. You so mean the drop, the the drop right. down? No. Yeah. And which publish settings? Is that what we're looking at? Uh, no, the view published side. The top right oh, corner. Yep. yep. Sorry. Yep. Great. Thanks. Okay, so now the website is online with a very basic uh, little change that we did. And so now let's check the, the rest of the chat. Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. So um, what we did now is publish uh, a website on the Google Sites platform. That's why the, the domain is now sites.google.com and so on. Uh, if you would want to have your own name as your domain, you can then later on uh, purchase 
a domain name and connect it to this website. Um, so I know, yeah, so that can be pretty cheap. Like in Australia, it's like 15, 20, 25 bucks per year. If you want to have like a .com address uh, in your name, it, it can get pretty pricey. Um, so people, um, a lot of times would then use like a .net address or something that's a little bit cheaper than um, than the .com domain. Uh, I, in general, I think it's fine to have just like the Google site, like uh, Matt Spike, he just has the Google domain name, uh, like sites.google.com slash uh, Matt Spike or whatever. I think it's fine. Or, um, I know that Hedwig also has the same thing. Um, and uh, it's it's findable. It's uh, yeah, it's common. Uh, I think most people who have their own website don't don't really have a domain for it nowadays anymore. Um, but you you can if you if you're interested in in getting a domain, you can click on. Can I see the oh, the? I think if you go to settings in the on the website, uh, on the Google sites, um, and then go to custom domains. And then when you click on start setup, you don't need to do that right now, then it, it, it guides you step by step to adding your own domain name to the website. And if you want to do that, uh, yeah, it's, it can be pretty cheap um, and uh yeah it's, it's pretty it, a pretty easy process if you have a google account already uh then it just like takes the money out of your google account once a year like the 20 dollars or i think it's like 18 dollars or so for for basic domain um and if yeah if that's fine with you then then that's okay it's a little bit tricky to find a good name i think for a website um like in my case everything related to my name is already kind of taken so other people already have those domain names. Um, yes. Do, do, do. Spam call, yeah, okay. Does this non-domain attract spam? I might be, I don't know. So uh, yeah, it's hard to say. So I have some domains. Uh, so I own some domains and other other websites I have similar to this one um, with WordPress uh, and also some Google site. And yeah, in all those, in all those websites, I get, I get spam every now and then. So it's kind of like hard to tell. I guess it kind of depends on uh, if you're lucky or not, or if you have uh, a lot of contact information on there, which makes it easy for spam or so, I don't know. Uh, yeah. Okay, maybe we should uh, add some basic content to the website now. So uh, from now on, whenever you want to change your uh, Google site, you can just search for Google sites, and then you get to the uh, the um, to the editor. And on the editor, you can click on the website that you just did, uh, and then you can change it. And so, for example, if you see on the uh, on the right side of the screen right now. There's four different options. One, one is text box, one is images, one is embed, and one is drive. And so those are different elements that you can just add to your website. And if you click on text box, it adds under the uh, headline of uh, the header of your website, it adds a box where you can now type in uh, whatever you want to want that to be. So in Matt, uh, Spike's case, I think it started with bio. He had his first uh, text block was a bio uh, in, in like one paragraph. Okay, so now Grant uh, added some text. And so now if you click on publish again, the blue button. Yeah, you can click on got it. So now we get a screen where on the right side, we see the old version of the website. And on the left side, we see the new version of the website. And so it's just asking if that 
if those are the changes that you want, and if you're happy with what it looks like, like now as a new version, you can click on publish again, the blue button in the top right. And now it's published. And if you go to your website over here on top um, and refresh it, there's your edit text. Okay, so um, uh, okay. So, but a really question? Can you go to the chat again? Oh, yeah. okay. More concerns about spam, I think, and oh, yeah. strategies on preventing it. Oh yeah, yeah. I see that a lot. That people instead of having the ad would would put some kind of placeholder there. In the email address, um, so it seems to be working. Or yes. Yeah, so. so there are a couple so. of people talking about domains. What would happen if you had already purchased a domain and then created a Google site? Mm -hmm. Could you yeah. then use that domain for yes. the Google site? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's also the, then in settings on the Google site. You can I think then um, add custom domain and then uh, select your domain name. And then you have to change uh, some setting on your domain side where you purchase the domain with, I don't know, like GoDaddy or whatever provider you got. And um, then uh, it should take a few hours for it to uh, finalize the process and then it should be online under the domain name. Okay. Uh, so one last thing right now, yeah, on top here at, uh, on the on the website it says your name. So the the website tab has your name on it, like up here. Um, and to change that, you need on the editor you need to change the very top of the website where it says your name and just put your your own name in there. Okay, and then publish. And unpublished changes. Okay, maybe it automatically yeah. recognize it. So. Let's just try re refreshing. Oh. Maybe you have to change something also in here to recognize that some changes happen. Though. Test. And publish. Mm -hmm. I'll refresh my open web page. Oh, it's still not uh, appearing. So, hmm, yeah, so it might take a while, or uh, I don't know. Some, somehow it's uh, not doing it at the moment. Yeah, okay. So, it, yeah, as I said, you can add. Um, like text blocks, you can add photos, uh, you can add um, videos, you can embed videos, um, which would then be hosted on YouTube and your website does just link to them. Um, and yeah, pretty much anything you would wanna embed there, you can embed. And I, I wouldn't go overboard with the links, as I said, so I, I would keep it pretty short and quick. And while you are editing, um, and add content, I would every now and then just publish it, look at it, what it looks like. Also look at it on your phone. So take your phone out and go to the web address and look on uh, look at your website um, on the phone to see what it looks like in, on a mobile okay, interface. Because um, right. on mobile, it kind of like rearranges a little bit the... Uh, the, the, the photo, I think, is below the headline and, and things like that. And if you have like too much text, while well, it might look nice on the desktop, if you have just to scroll down on your phone through the text, I think it's uh, yeah, you, you you cannot really tell that by just looking at it on the desktop. That's why it's always good to check it. Um, Wolf, Wolfgang, I think Amanda just um, discovered you can okay. also do that. Maybe do you want to change your photo, Grant? 
So let's let's not you on the photo. Wolfgang can't hear us, can he? No, he can't. Uh, <laughs> we have a question coming in. Um, oh. No, because Aman yeah. Amanda just discovered that you can also preview it on your phone without okay. going. Oh. I just saw that if you click preview at the top, you can also preview phone tablet. Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah, so if you, if you don't have your phone handy or if you just want to preview it, uh, what it looks like on a, on, a, uh, on an iPad or on a phone or different formats, you can just like, yeah, look at preview. And where is the preview? It's also when you go down the, the, the arrow next to the publish. Review changes. Oh, is it this one? Oh, yeah. yeah, like the different screen item. Okay, and at the bottom you, you have different oh, options yeah. for phone. Yeah, and tablet. And desktop. Okay, nice. There's another question. Okay, but the about link is supposed to go somewhere. Where do you change the content of that link page? Okay, so on the uh, on the right side, there is the menu where it's right now it underlines insert, where you can insert a text box and so on. And next to it, it says pages. And if you click on pages, you have the pages which are part of the menu at the moment. So it's home, about, and project page. So if one of those pages you don't want anymore, you can just click on the three buttons next to it and just delete this page. For example, the project page, if you don't have a project, you can just delete it. Uh, about, I think, is a good page to have if you want to have like information about yourself uh, or contact details or so on. Uh, I would most likely, if I would build a page about myself right now, would get rid of everything except the home page, um, and and then just have one page where on top I have a short description, and then when you scroll down, there's uh, the detailed contact options. Yeah, and there so there's insert, then there's pages on the right side, and then next to it is also themes. When you click on that, you already uh, like. So the we, we said the layout on, on this one looks a lot like what uh, Matt Spike did, and that is because he used the same theme as, as we are using right now. And if you are not happy with, with what the colors look like, what the, the, the text font looks like, you can just change to a different theme, and then your whole website just take, changes the style of it. So if you like click on, let's say, Diplomat, then the text font changes to something that looks a little bit more uh, lawyer-esque. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you guys remember there was on Matt Spike's website, there was those gray boxes at the bottom. And right now we also have those gray boxes here on our website. If you scroll down uh, and then click on like the element with gray boxes, there's next to it is a trash can symbol on the left side. Or you can like delete individual ones or the whole module of uh, gray boxes. Just click on that one, yeah, and then it just deletes it. And then, if you when you publish the next time, the gray boxes disappear. And for the content, so if you have if you want to have photos on there, you can uh, like upload those photos from your uh, computer. But just then you click on a photo right now, and then I think it says replace the photo. Then you can upload a photo from your computer or from your Google Drive, or I think you can also just link it from the internet maybe somewhere. Uh, yeah, you can change the size. Uh, and if you go into the three dots, replace image and then upload. And then you can just upload a photo from your, from your computer. And I think, yeah, like, one, two, three photos is okay. If you have like 10 photos, 20 photos, I think it's getting a little bit uh, like overloaded and, and it's gonna take a long time for people when they are, let's say in a remote area somewhere doing field work, trying to look up your contacts and then they have to wait for 10 minutes for your website to load because all those photos are loading. Uh, so I think like, yeah, one, two, three photos is okay. 
10 photos, I think is too much to have on there. But it's kind of like how you want to do it. I don't know if like, let's say if you have a cat and you like to put your cat photos on there, you can also make make it part of the website that it's about cats a little bit also, you know. Um, have some cat photos on there. Yeah, and that's pretty much it, I guess. So I guess everybody can experiment around, put some bullet points in there, put some text in there. Oh. So I have a question about Hedvig's website. I'll go ahead and open that up mm -hmm. to see what error they might be getting. Oh uh, yeah. So she yeah, so she has a whole bunch of tabs. And one of the tabs on her website is CV and there's nothing there. So that means she has her CV on on her Google Drive and linked it to her website, but the general public doesn't have access to her Google Drive, and that's why there's now just a lock symbol. Um, yeah. So if we want to link Google Drive documents, we have to make sure that it has open access. Yeah. 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 And so yeah, looking at Hedwig's website, can you go on your home screen? I think hers was a pretty good example of. Yeah, I think the photo is perfect. I mean, you recognize her right away, right? Um, it's a very clear layout. It's uh, like every every information, like when you when you get on this website, within two seconds, you have every information you need about her, uh, her email address, Twitter, what she's doing. Um, and when you scroll down, I think there are some links to her thesis, uh, her PhD thesis to download. And some photos. Yeah, I think that's a very good example for for a nice looking website. Name pronunciation. Okay, here yeah, it's getting a little bit niche. -y. Name pronunciation. Uh, so yeah, I mean that's that's catering to the linguists. Um, um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and some yeah, like two three photos, a little bit of text something a little bit uh, like personal, you know, like I can tell already she's a linguist, she's detail oriented. Um, she's she's wearing a pronunciation of words. So yeah, good. It gives me a good impression. So you want to see, open it up for any questions? Uh, yeah. yeah. If anybody has any questions, just um, either type them in the chat or Use the raise hand function and we'll give you the floor. Hi, sorry, I have a question. I can't find a raise hand function. From okay, no worries. Oh. Just go, go for it then. I, I can send you a celebration. Um, I was wondering, do you know on the first page, if you go back to Grant's page that you were editing, um, yeah, if you scroll down and you have selected work and then there's name of project and then you have the project pages, how do you link between the two of them? I don't know. Do they link to each uh, other or is that so, something different? So this is something different. Yeah, so in this, uh, on the front side where it says name of project, uh, yeah. that's like a sub project so that is something different than the, what we had on top of the navigation where it says uh like what does it say there project page so those yes, would okay. be would be different ones but if you oh uh, so it's not like so a one, thumbnail that clicks through huh? so i thought it was like oh this is like the the thumbnail button that you click and then you go uh, to that project hmm. page but okay it's not yeah no yeah it's a different one Okay, so the one on the top would result on the if you look at it on your phone in the burger um, symbol. You know, like where you click on, it's just like three lines. People call it a burger, uh, and then when you click on it, there's the navigation menu. Thank you. Okay. Are there any other questions? Uh, 
Hello, it's Jackie Troy again. Um, yes. There was that question about the site um, for, uh, yeah, so um, it does, when you go to Hedwig's site, it, go, it took me to Google Drive, you need access and it's locked. Did, did yeah. somebody say something about that? Sorry. Yeah, so the, there's a problem that the, the content on the Google Drive is linked from the website, but uh, the public has no access to the Google Drive, and that's why it just shows the lock symbol. So I guess Google Drive is an option if you make the, the content public, but it's better maybe to upload the content to your website from your desktop computer or from your Oh, files. I see. Um, so she's done right. They, okay, now I understand. Hosted yeah. on the on the Google side and not on Google Drive. This could be a good option if you actually do want to force people to request access. Um, I suppose because I could, in theory, request access to her CV mm -hmm. here, and it would send her a message asking, yeah, for the grant me permission to view it, but. So I guess I'll give everybody one last chance to ask a question. Otherwise, we might just bring it to a close. All right, well, thank you very much, everybody, for coming. and. Let's all give Wolfgang a big round of applause. Thank you so much for this, Wolfgang. It's really helpful for everybody, I'm sure. Yeah, if you run into any difficulties, you can always send me an email uh, and I, I can help you set up your site. I'm gonna go ahead and put his email and mine in the chat. Um, This will come far away. Mm -hmm. Yep. Then, so Wolfgang's email is in the chat. I'll add mine as well. So just go ahead and email me if you would like a copy of the slides or a, or a copy of the recording from today. All right, thank you very much, everybody.